Okay. Okay. The Gemara that we're beginning today is Daf Vov in Pesach Tanis, and we're starting from four lines from the top. Tonerabonim. So basically, Tonerabonim. The, the Gemara is dealing with etymology. In other words, what is the uh, history and the definition of words that we say every day in davening? Right? So we say that in davening. So yeah. the Gemara is going to say, what's the, what are the two things? The rabbis taught. Yoira, the word Yoira means it's a type of rain. It's an early rain. It's like instructs the people to start um, tarring their roofs because, and now we're beginning the rainy season. You don't want it leaking into your house. To bring in the fruits that you left out in the field to dry, bring them in. And do all, all the, the preparations that you need to do for the, re- the upcoming winter. So Yoira is the early re- season. It's it's like in the if you're in the landlord business, you know that when the one time the t- temperature drops below, you know, 55, 50, you have to start to make sure your boiler is working. Then it goes up the next day to 70. But that's what it is. Yoira is that type, the rain that r- reminds you to start preparing for the winter. That's why it's called Yora, to teach you. Dover Acha, another meaning of the word Yora, it means it waters. Shemarve es aretz. It 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 gives it gives water and moistens the earth umashke at a time and waters it till the depths. So Nema, the pasuk says tlomeha rave when the when the furrows are full of water naches gedudeha. People love that because they feel uh, secure that the, that there's water and that the crops are going to grow. Berivim to my gegenot simcha tevarech when God makes a drizzle. It uh, softens the ground and the, the produce is blessed. So what we see from the word rave means it, it moistens and makes it wet. So that's what yora means wet. It makes, it's a type of rain that makes wet. Dovaracha, another interesting uh, translation of the word yora is yora means sheyorid benachas. Yora can mean teacher, like we said before, but a, a good teacher is somebody that teaches softly. And smoothly. And Rashi says he teaches also like an arrow, straight. He doesn't go with krimis varus. That is called yoira. Yoira is somebody who, who goes smoothly. So that's what the meaning of the word yoira. The ain't a bazaf. He doesn't go with anger. So now, so we have, okay, hi, Mayor. We just started. So we just gave three definitions of, of the word yoira in Kriyashma. Yoira generally means to teach. And it's, uh, it refers to the early rains, and it goes smoothly, it waters the ground. So Yorah has a positive connotation. The word Yorah is a positive word. So the Gemara says, Oy, ain't I? maybe not so. Yorah means a bad word. What does it mean? El Paris. It blows, it takes the fruit off the trees. Like you had fruits there that was there from the summer, like an esrik. You know, an esrik tree has the fruits all year round, and, and pomegranate trees and this yora is the type of rain that blows those fruit, fruits away. Umashtif as a zroyim, or makes it, it, it waterlogs the, the seeds. It washes away the seeds, so it doesn't take root. Umashtif as a so it waters away the trees, the saplings. So maybe it means a bad thing. Now Rashi yeah, doesn't... Bernard, does yora in Hebrew mean shoot? Yorah means shoot. So, so what is uh, what does shoot mean? What does shoot have to do with rain? So Rashi right. says that goes straight into the ground. Maybe uh. that's one of the things that Rashi says. But the point is that the Gemara is saying maybe yorah means something else. It it uproots. It it cracks. Yorah can mean uh, break. We, where do you find yorah? You break. Rashi brings a pasuk by the Aseris Adibris. Yoroi ye yore. I'm where my finger is. Where my pointer is. That means that if you see somebody walking up Har Sinai, shoot him down, right? Shoot him down. That's what the Torah says. Don't walk up to the mountain. Let's say one of the Jews would have walked up the mountain in the middle of uh, Haseris Adibras. You should. The Torah says, shoot him down. So maybe that it's something that shoots down the fruits that are left on the tree. In other words, it's a negative connotation. Now, how would you read the Pasuk? Rashi says, it's very strange, but what the Gemara is basically saying is, 
God will say, if you listen to the mitzvahs, then good. But if not, that's good. But then, it will be very terrible rains. So it'll be a, t- a terrible rain. So maybe Yora has a bad connotation, even though the Pasuk wouldn't make so much sense because later on the Pasuk goes into the negative. Anyway, Talmud, Talmud Loima Malkosh. So we see the Pasuk says the word Malkosh and it juxtaposes the word Yora or Malkosh. So the word Malkosh is a positive connotation. Ma Malkosh Lebracha, just like the word Malkosh is a blessing word. Af Yora Lebracha. So also the word Yora means a blessing word. Okay, so now, Maybe let's say let's let's play with the word malkosh. You're telling me the word malkosh, which is the late rains, means is a is a positive word, a blessing type of word. Maybe not. Malkosh means malkosh could means it mal it mal means like mila, like it cuts down. Koish means things that are 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 hard. What does that mean? El shemapil as a button. It means it, it knocks down houses. Umeshaberes ho ilonais breaks down trees. Or the word malkoish could come from the word lekesh, which is a type of a grasshopper. Umale es haskoyin brings up grasshoppers. So maybe malkoish is a negative connotation. Talmud loyma, so the Pesach says yoira, that the Torah says that malkoish is like yoira. Ma yoira livracha, just like the word yoira is a positive connotation, a blessing word. Af malkoish livracha. So malkoish is also a bracha, a blessing type of word. So the Gemara asks back, you just... How do you know Yorah is a blessing type of word? It could go either way. Yora could be a blessing type of word and it could be a curse type of word. The Yorah Gufa Manolam, but how do I know Yorah in the Chumash always means a blessing type of word? Dixiv, because the Pasuk says, by the Yoel, which we discussed yesterday, Yoel says, uh, sons of Zion, Gilu v'simchu Bashem. Have joy and be glad with Hashem Elokeichem and Hashem your God. Ki nosan lochem. God is now giving you after all this year, seven years of hunger as hamoira, the early rains. Let's talk uh, as of loving kindness. The yarid lochem geshem, and he's going to give bring down rains. Moira malkish. This moira early rains malkish, and the late rains barishain only in in the month of Nisan. So we see the moira. The word moira is let's means. Litzdaka means it's a loving kind, loving kindness. So the word yoira must be a positive word, not a negative word. And if yoira is a positive word, then malkosh also has to have a positive connotation. We're going to discuss in, the, in the two lines now what's the positive connotation of the word malkosh. First, the Gemara says toner abonon, yoira the early rains bermacheshman. Now I want to tell you that the word yoira means it's not one rain; it's a cluster of three rains that happen in the month of Cheshvan. And that's called Yoira rains. Umalkoish is a cluster of rains that happens beneath sun, like April showers. And the point of that rain is, of course, to uh, help the, the fill out the berry in the stalk. We'll see, we'll see what, that, what the benefits of having a rain prior when you just planted, and then right after when you're about to harvest. So the Gemara says, First, you tell me that Yoira comes in Mar Cheshvan. Umalkosh Benisan, Umalkosh comes in Nisan. Maybe I'll say not so. Yoira, the early rains come in Tishrei. Umalkosh Beir, and Malkosh comes in Ir. Because it's possible you could be in Israel in Tishrei and it could rain. Maybe that's Yoira rain. You could you could be in Israel for Pesach and then stay on for Ir during Svira and it'll rain then too. So how do you know what's called, how could you define Yoira in this only rains that come in a specific month of Mar Cheshvan and Malkosh, a specific rain that comes in Nisan? Talmud Loima Be'itoi. The word, the Torah says that a God's going to give Yoira or Malkosh Be'itoi in its right time. When is the most perfect time to have the early rains and the late rains? So that those months are Cheshvan and, and for the late rains would be, would be a Nisan time. So Be'itoi, has to be referring to Yoira being coming in the right time. Now the Gemara st- discusses the etymology of the word Malkosh. Normally in Hebrew, uh, words are three three letters to make a Shoresh, right? Every, like Shomer, if you remember from your Hebrew classes. But here is a funny type of word, Malkosh, and, and it has four basic letters as part of the Shoresh. So the Gemara discusses these things. 
what what is what does it mean malkoi? So it's like a compound word. Omer Rav Nahilai Bar Idi Omer Shmuel. He said that the word malkoi means Dava Shemol. Again, you have the word Mila in there. It cuts. Kashu Sehen Shel Yisrael. Oh, the stubbornness, the koishi, the difficulty of the stubbornness of the Jewish people, because. Uh, when it doesn't rain, and then it rains, if it doesn't rain all year, and it rains in Nisan, that's a, a kolola in the world. And therefore, um, it, when, when that happens, it like breaks people out of their stubbornness of not doing tshuva. So that's why the word malkosh means it has the, uh, the capability of really slicing through the, the closed heart of the Jewish people, so to speak, and make them not stubborn and do tshuva. The Bay Rabbi Shmuel Tana, the Bay Rabbi Shmuel said, learns, Dava Shemamale Tvua Bakashel. It, it fills up the Tvua in its stalk. In other words, I have a picture here of a stalk. In the spike over here, in this picture, is where the berries are. The berries are like little, you know, it's the tiny things that you have to you squeeze it and let it drop. So it, it makes it take up the, the amount of space in its pocket, in its cover. So dove, that's why dove, the word mal means to fill up. Shemamali tvua bekashe, it fills up the tvua, the, the, the berry, which is the tvua, bekashe in its stalk. But masnit tani, dove, it's something, it's a type of rain, shiyorid, that falls on al hamalilos, that's the ear. Malilas is the top part, not just the, the grain, but the whole flower on top of it, this part, the spike, the whole spike. Val hakashin and the stalk itself, the sin stalk, that's called malkoi. So basically it's a it's a compound word, which was which is when, when something like that happens, not often in Hebrew, the Gemara discusses what the meaning of the word is. Tanura Bana, the rabbi is taught, Yoruba Marchez Malkash Benis. We learned that Yara is in Machaj Malkash Benishan, Ata Oime Yoruba Marchez and Ela Bechodish Kisle. Maybe Yara is in Machodish Kisle. Before we said maybe it was in Tishrei. Now maybe Yara that could be the good early blessing range could be in Kisle. Talmud loyma beito yera malkosh, ma malkosh beito af yera beito. The Gemara feels now that if if the rains would fall in Kislev, that's not called in the right time. The right perfect moment of good early rains is in Mar Cheshvan. Tanya Idach we learned in another brisa. Yera be Mar Cheshvan u malkosh benisan, which is what we what we've been saying all along. Yera the yera rains are in Mar Cheshvan u malkosh benisan divre meya. New shita of this Chachamim, that Yoyre is in Kislev. Man Chachamim, who is the Chachamim? Amar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, Rabbi Yaisi, it's Rabbi Yaisi. Which Rabbi Yaisi? So we're going to see that Rabbi Yaisi holds like this. Remember, Yoyre is not one rain. It's a cluster of three different rains. And those three different rains somehow make, help the plant take root. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa. Ezehi revere Shaina. What's called the first rain of Yora? Habechira, the first rain, the eldest son, so to speak, of the Yora is Beshloisha Bermachazran. It should be raining around third of Marchazran. Bainanis, the second rain should be Beshivaboy on the seventh day of Marchazran. Afila, the last time that you rain is Beshiva Osaboy on the 17th day of Marchazran. Divre Meir. So that ends at the 17th day of Marchesvan, ends the, the Yoro. So now it's very important to know this for the Masechta, because if it didn't rain after Sukkot till already 17th of Marchesvan, it didn't rain at all. So then the, 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 we'll learn later that Sadiqim, the G'dayli Hadar, the rabbis of the shul, will all begin a private fast. And if and they fast for a couple of days, and if that if the if the rain still didn't fall, then they declared it as a public fast. So Beshiva Asaboy, according to Rameir, is is at that moment when the select individuals start fasting. Rabbi Yehuda, I mean, Rabbi Yehuda says no, it's a little bit later. Beshiva seventh day of Mar Cheshvan, Beyudzayin is the seventeenth day of Mar Cheshvan, Ube by the twenty third day of Mar Cheshvan, that's when. Uh oh, if you're in trouble, if it didn't rain at all to the 23rd day of Marcheshvan. And then Rabbi Yaisi, I met, and here's where Rabbi Yaisi holds. Rabbi Yaisi holds that Yoira could be even in Kislev. 
So he so holds that the first rains is Zayin on the seventeenth day of Marcheshvan. The second one is seven days later on the twenty third of Marcheshvan. And the final part of Yaira, which is another seven days later, Brosh Chaydish Kislev, is Rechaydish Kislev. And therefore, it would make sense what Rabbi Yaisi is about to say. The select individuals would not begin to fast unless you had Rosh Chaydish Kislev. If throughout the Cheshvan and throughout the whole month of Cheshvan it didn't rain at all, only then the select individuals pa- started to fast because really it could start Yoira rains even in Kislev. Um, Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, Halachi, Rav Meyayasi. The Halachi is like Rabbi Yaisi, that the, the, that the Yoira rains could last into Kislev, and then, um, and then we would pass it like Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi, like Rabbi Yaisi, that that's when the Yechidim would fast. A Meymar Masn Lahod Rav Chizda Bahad Lishana. A Meymar had a different version of what Rav Chizda was talking about and who Rav Chizda was paskining like in a totally different uh, realm. What, 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 would it, what was Rav Chizda's according, version according to Ameymar? He was referring to another Machlekes. When do you start saying the same Talamot of Racha? So, and in this case, it's somehow tied to the first of the Yoru reigns. So, the first opinion is when do you say the same Talamot of Racha? The third of Machazrin, that's when you start saying the same Talamot of Racha. This is Rab Meir's opinion, basically, because he says that the first Yoru reigns, as we saw before, our line is Bishloisha Bamachazrin. So, might as well start with the same Talamot of Racha by the first of the cluster of the reigns. Rabbi Gamliel says, no, on the seventh day, of uh, of Bar Cheshvan, which is somewhere like Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, Beshiva. That's when you say, that's when the cluster reigned. Um, Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, Halacha Karaman Gamliel. The Halacha is like Raman Gamliel. Basically, it's another way of saying Halacha Karab Yehuda. That the Halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, not like Rav Yaisi. Kaman Ozla, who had the Tanya? Who does it conform this following Brisa? Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, Omer Shimon Ben Gamliel says, Gishamim Shiyardu Shivi Yom and Zechazeh. Rains that fall for seven days in a row, and ata moina behem revia rishayno shnia ushlishes. Then you can it could actually be the first, the first rain, the second rain, and the third rain. It depends, because between each of the rains was a seven day period. So for rain straight for seven days, uh, for seven days, then it counts as two. You hit on the first rain and the second rain because the first day would be considered re- the first day of the rain would be the Revier Shina. By the seventh day, you're ready up to Revier Shnia. So that's what he says. That that Brisa must be going according to command, Krabiyasi, like Rabbiasi. So Rabbi Shimon Leel also aligned himself with the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi. Nevertheless, Am Rav Chizda, and this is supposed to change the gear, Sarashi says, Halacha Karab Yehuda, that Halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda. Let's go back to what Rabbi Yehuda said. Beshiva. The three Yoru reigns start in the seventh of Marcheshwan. So on the seventh of Marcheshwan, you'll begin to say the same Talamotl of Rocha. And if by the 23rd of Marcheshwan, it did not rain at all, that's when the Yechidim, the select Sadiqim and individuals would start, pious individuals would already begin fasting, sensing that something is wrong. Now, you could figure out why um, I have to tell you, Halacha, that there's a first rain. And that there's a third rain. But why do I need to know when the second rain of the of the Yoru cycle is? So the Gemara says, Bishlam, it makes sense. Revere Shaina, I need to tell you why there's a first rain, Lish all, because that's when you know you have to know when to say, begin to say the same Talmud model of Rocha. Shlishes, I have to tell you when the final, when you're expecting the final rain of the Yoru is because Lihis Anois, you'll fast. In other words, if it didn't rain at all, up uh, until the last, when you're expecting the last of the Yoru rain, then you 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 begin to fast, or the Yechidim begin to fast. But Shnia Lamai, what's the halacha uh, ramification that you need to know when the second, the middle rain is supposed to happen? Amr Abzeir Lindarim, it has to do with Nidarim, and make a nether. And a nether, you need to know when the second rains. What does that mean? It's now we learned in the Mishnah. We go to the Amr Cheni. Hanoider ad hagashamim. Someone makes a promise, and he says that I am not going to step foot in my friend's house 
until the rainy season starts. Well, he got angry at his, uh, in the bungalow against his friend and um, decides never going to his house till the rainy season begins. So when does, when is he permitted? When is his nether over? That has to do when the second rains fall down. He didn't mean to, till the beginning of the first rains. It has to, the second one of the Yoira, which would be, let's say, Yudzayin Mar Cheshvan, that's when his nether will be over. Because Geshamim means plural rains, two rains. So that's one Afkimina, why I need to know what's the second rains for. Rav Zvid Omar it has to do with olives. What does olives have to do? The halacha is that when you, let's, there's a halacha of leket and there's a halacha of peret. Let's just learn those two. Or shikha or peya. You know that you're supposed to leave gifts to the aniyam when you cut your field. Let's say you leave off the corner of the field, you let that poor people come and collect it. Or if you're cutting the, if you're cutting grapes and let's say a little, a little grape falls on the floor so then you have to leave it for the Aniyam. They come to your vine and they would pick up the grapes that fell on the floor. Or olives also, you're picking your olive tree and then a few olives fell to the floor. Don't pick it up, says the Torah, leave it for the poor people. The question is, how long do you have to leave it there? So we, we can assume that if poor people came and then they came again to your tree and checked it out a couple of times, then you could assume that they're not coming back to that tree and so to speak, the poor people made it hefker. And if you come back to your own tree and find a couple of olives on the floor, you're permitted to take it. So there are different things. So that let's let's read the Mishnah. The Amasai from when call Adam Mutarim. When is every person permitted beleket b'shikho b'peya? On leket shikho peya, the type of things that you forget in your field or things that fell while you were cutting or pay up. When you when can you assume that that no poor people are coming to take it? And so to speak, uh, the, the, the poor people said you could have it. When the Nemushas came, and, and Nemushas is a type of poor person, when he came, we're going to see what this means. When he came, if he leaves the field, no other poor people are coming anymore. What is it? Things by grapes. Let's say the grapes. And oilless is a type of uh, cluster of grapes, which you left for the Aniyim. If poor people came twice to that vine, to that to that vine, then you can assume that nobody they ready the words out that there's not there's nothing to for the takings anymore, and so you the owner if you come back to it you can take it for yourself if you find something. the olives you go to your olive tree, and all the olives are on the floor. So when are you permitted to come pick those olives on the floor and you don't have to give it to the aniyim anymore because the poor people gave up. When the second rains come down, by that time, you can assume uh, that all the Aniyam came. And, and if they left a couple of olives on the floor, they, they're not, they don't care. They're not coming back. My Nemushis. What is this Nemushis that we said that the Nemushis is the Mishnah? You see, as we, we've seen throughout Shas, is that whenever we quote a Mishnah in, in Zeroyim where there was no Gemara, so the Gemara always tries to explain it as best as it can, and we'll go off on a tangent. What does the Mishnah mean? Who are these Nemushas that come that you can assume that after they come, these type of poor people, you can take the, 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 the stuff for yourself. It's the old people that walk on a stick. Old people that walk on a stick, poor old people. So they're coming and looking and looking and looking. And so when they decide to give up on this, on this spot, then you could assume no other people are coming. Let's say there's no old people. That means a guy who's, who's, that means Lakute bas Lakute means the guy who comes, to, the poor person that comes to collect. And then his young son that comes behind him and, and picks up what he missed. If they, if that happened, if most of the Aniyim brought their kids and their kids came and, you know, they went to the, to the field. So then when they leave, you could assume that they're not coming back. So now we have another reason why you need to know the second rains. Rapapa Amma, Rapapa says, I need to th- give you another reason why you need to know the, when the rains are. You're permitted to take a shortcut through your neighbor's field throughout the summer months and everything like that because you're not ruining his field. And this is a, a, a given, you know, easement that everybody has. It's part of the Tachonus of Yeshua. But when once the second rainy season passed, 
you're not allowed to take that shortcut because by you walking through his field, you're destroying his crops. You're allowed to go on shortcuts with permission until the second rains come down. Then you have to stop walking through your friend's field, even if it's a shortcut to shul, because maybe your friend planted something there and you're walking on where he planted and that will ruin his crops. So that's why I need to know when the second rains come down. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak Omar, it has to do with Shemitah. Why do I need to know when the Shemitah is? I have to know when the second rains is because up until that point, you're allowed to use straw and hay as firewood. Straw and hay of Shemitah firewood, you're allowed to use it. Leviah perish is to get rid of the fruits of Shemitah. The Tanah we learned in the Mishnah. You have hay and straw in your field. It's Shemitah, Shal Shemitah. You're allowed to benefit from it by using it as cooking wood or whatever you use as fuel, fire fuel. So how long are you supposed to, can you benefit from this straw and of and hay of Shemitah? Until the second rains came down in the eighth year. Because at that point, you have to get rid of it. Because we know that once you, once you can't find hay and straw out in the field, so you have hay and straw in your house. If it's Shemitah, you have to get rid of it like chametz. My timer, the Ksiv, the Pasuk says, When there's animal, the food, the food that you have in your house is out there in the field for your animal and the wild animal to eat. So we darshan, if the wild animal can eat the same food that you're eating in your house, the same Shemitah apple that you're eating in your house, he could find the same apple in the field you can give it, you can eat it, and you can give it to your animal to eat in your own home. Call it a chaya Minnesota, but if the, the wild animal can't find any apple out there in the in the field because there's no more apples, call it then you can't you have to get rid of it for your animal in the house. You have to burn it basically. So hay and straw are out there throughout the year of Shemitah up until the second rain, somewhere in the middle of a marchesman. Then you won't have hay and straw in the fields, therefore you're not allowed to use it anymore as personal benefit. New Gemara, Amar Rababo, Rababo said, my Lushan Revia, we kept using this language of Revia. Revia is uh, is uh, like an odd, I, I would say, uh, like a, it's almost like a sexual term. So why do we call reins in that, that type of term, a sexual term? So the Gemara says, Dava it's something that penetrates the, the ground. The Rav Yehuda, the Amr Rav Yehuda, Mitra Bala the Arahi. The rain is is like the husband of the earth. It's fascinating. It's like almost like the the sperm has to reach the egg. So the specific specific rain has to reach the seed, so to speak. Shenema, and that's all you know. Men Hashemayim, that Hashem works it all out. Kikasha Yered Hageshem Hashem Men Hashemayim, just like rain and snow falls from heaven. Shama Liyashiv, it doesn't go back up. Kim Hirvas Aretz. It like uh, penetrates the ground, the the earth, like a, like a man to a, a woman. it causes the earth to give birth, vitzmicha, and sprout forth. Fascinating. That's why we're using this word revia to remind ourselves of 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 the power of rain, and the hashkacha of rain. What's called a good season? That means it could. We said before that if it doesn't rain, you begin fasting. But it, but let's say it rains a little bit. Is that called, they're not going to fast? You have to have a solid rain. What's a solid rain called Revia Rishayna? It has to seep into the ground, uh, a tefach into the ground. Then you know you had a solid Revia Rishayna. If you didn't, you're probably going to start thinking about fasting. Shania, what's called a solid second rain, if you made enough mud that you can, to, you can seal a barrel with the mud that was, was, that was wet there. Amar Rav Chizda said, It says in the Chumash that when God's angry, he's going, to, he's going to hold up the Shemayim and not bring rain. But if there was enough rain that fell, that causes that you can pick up mud to seal a barrel, there's no problem of the Otsar, of the gods cursed the, the land not to bring rain. Another Gemara. The Amr of Chizda. Rav Chizda said, sometimes you don't even have to have such a solid rain. You can have a rain that, you know, is so uh, quality good that even if it doesn't make mud or anything like that and doesn't seep into earth at Tafakh, 
It depends on the timing. It could be a solid rain and you don't have to be, it could be a good quality rain. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, it's not considered a curse. Geshamim shiardu koidim ba'atzar. If you have rain that falls before you said Krishma, you said the word va'atzar, ain behem mishim va'atzar. Then you don't have the problem of va'atzar hashemayim. It's not a curse. So what does it mean? When did the rain fall? Omra abaya, loy omram el koidim va'atzar urta. The rain has to fall during the daytime, late afternoon. Before you read the Krishna as of night time, if rain fell during the daytime, late afternoon, that's a great rain. Avo koidim va'atzar the tzafra. Let's say you have a rain that falls early morning before the sunrise. Then even then yesh bemishim va'atzar. If unless it's very powerful and makes the ground very wet, then if it doesn't, then you should know that the, the rain is coming so early in the morning before dawn is a cursed rain. The Amar of Yehuda Bar Yitzchak, Hani Ananani the Tzafra Les Bei Meshasha. These clouds and early rains of the morning don't are meaningless. The Ksiv Ma Asal Lacha Efrayim Ma Asal Lacha Yehuda. God's giving a rebuke to the people. Ephraim and Yehuda, what can I do more for you? Chazdechem, your kindness is kanan boike, like the clouds of the morning, which are meaningless. Whatever you're doing is meaningless. Amalei Rapapa Labayis. Rapapa questioned to Abaya, is it true that morning rains are worthless? Well, Amri Inche, people say, when you open the door and all of a sudden you see uh, rain, Right when you open up the door, when you open up the door, of your house to, uh, and you see rain. Right when you open the door, bar chamara You tell the guy who's a seller of wheat, uh, fold up your your pillowcase and go to sleep because everybody there's no point of it because everybody's going to have their own wheat. No, you're not going to. The, the price of wheat are going to be so low and the profits margin is going to be so so slim that it doesn't pay to get into that business. So we see that's an that's an that's a saying, a folk saying. But from the folk saying, you see that early morning rains are very good. So the Gemara says, "Loi kashi." That's not difficult. It depends how the clouds look when these rains come. Hard the tear be eva. If you have very thick cumulus clouds, you know I don't know if you if you fly in an airplane, you can see sometimes the clouds that are going up from the ground all the way up, very tall clouds. Those are good ones. Hard the kote banani. The bad ones are if it's just like a a flat cloud that just covering it, uh, covering the the surface, but it doesn't go. It's not thick. I'm Rav Yehuda. It's interesting. This you gotta know the science behind what the Gemara is trying to say over here. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda said, "Tavel l'shata." It's good for a year. The Tevis Amalta that it doesn't rain the month of Tevis. So that's January, basically. Why? Uh, why? Why is it good for a year when it doesn't rain in Tevis? Ikade Amre. Some say the loibayir tarbitze because there shouldn't be off days in the in the people learning. So the people shouldn't be amaratzim those that are learning Torah. If you have constant rain throughout the whole season, Cheshwan, Kislev, Teves, then then it's so soaking rain. People are not going to come to the yeshiva. The Ikade Amre. Others say the loishakol should do off. If you have too much rain, then blight could happen. So. It's, it's never good to have too much rain. If it rained Mar Cheshven, Kislev, and then you don't want it to rain in Teves. So the Gemara says, Aini, it's not so. Maybe it's a good idea. Amar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, Tavlishat, it's great for a year. The Teves Menevalta, that is a muddy Teves. In other words, if you have Teves with a lot of rain, that's great. So how does this Rav Chizda align with what Rav Yehuda just said? Like, Kasha, that's not difficult. Hod the Asa Mitra Mi'ikara. Hod the Asa Mitra Mi'ikara. Very simple. If you had rain during Cheshun and Kislev, then you don't want rain in Tevis because then you're, you're overdoing it. But when the Rav Chizda say it's good for a year that has rain in Tevis, the Loi Asa Mitra Mi'ikara. You didn't have any rain before. So that's that's uh, that's a Chiddush. V'amar Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda said, you have rain that falls on one part of a country and doesn't fall on another part of a country. That's not that. There's no din of the over there. Uh, you know, if you live in a place where one part had rain and another part did not have rain, that's not a curse because the part that had rain will uh, will export crops and support the other part that did not have the rain. Any, but is that always so? Voxiv, the Pasuk says, the, the God is like uh, saying that God saying I'm going to hold back 
And God says, not only that, I'm going to make hold back rains, but I'm going to make it rain on one city. I'm not going to make, make it rain on another city. Both of them is a klolo. The part that didn't have rain, the city that didn't have rain certainly got cursed. They don't have rain. Even the city that did get cursed also had too much rain. And therefore, we see that if it rains on one part and it doesn't rain on another part, it's not good. It's not a good idea. And so how does Rabchiza say that if Gishaman that falls in one part of a country and in another part of a country is, doesn't fall, that's not a problem. So that's nice. That's a good thing. Loikash is very simple. If so much rain fell on one part of a country and nothing on the other part of the country, so then that's terrible because then the even the part that got the rain can't do much with it. Ha, huh, but the what, what Rav Chizda was talking about, the Asa Kidim Aboyle, it came just right. In other words, one part country got just the amount of rainfall conducive for crop, and the other part didn't get. So what? That's not that's not God cursing the country because that part that got the crop will sell the, the export, the, the abundant excess, and will be able to support the other side of the country. How do you know that Pasik that says is talking about when it over rained? Because it said in this Pasik that got a lot of rain, the whole place rained, the whole place got sopped and flooded with rain. And therefore, that's what that's referring to. One more minute of the Gemara, and then we'll end. Gemara says, Amr Ababo, Rababo said, a very interesting thing uh, that you're supposed to bake a hatoy v'hametiv when you see it rain. Amra babo me'ena sai mavarchan al shaman. When do you see, uh, when do you make that bracha? The Mishnah says that you're supposed to make a bracha on the shaman hatoy v'hametiv or whatever, hatoy v'hametiv. When, when is enough rain that you can uh, start making that bracha? When you see mishayetze chasen l'kras kala. When one droplet falls, and as soon as one droplet falls, another one pops up and matches it. So one drop fell, and another one popped out. So that's chosen across kala. The chosen is the water that's underneath. The kala is, is the rain from heaven. When that rain kala comes down, and the chosen like jumps out. Uh, that's called, uh, so the puddles are a lot of puddles like that. My mavarech, what kind of bracha do you make? When you see the rain, you're supposed to say, I thank you, God, not for the rain, but for every drop of rain, every tip of the tip that you brought down for us. When you see that rain, we, we, he would end it off and say, We cannot thank you enough. If our mouths, like what we say in Ishbas, if our mouths were full of, of song, like the river, and our tongues were, were, were full of joy, like the waves, we cannot thank you enough for this rain. Ad, you say the whole nishman ad, ad yizvunu rachamech Hashem alkenu v'lo yizvunu that to, your 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 sympathy has never left us and let it never leave us. Baruch roiv haydois. We end off the bracha. Bless God. Roiv haydois. Most thank yous go to Hashem. So the Gemara doesn't understand. Roiv haydois. Most thank yous go to Hashem. Loi kol haydois. Not all thank yous go to Hashem. Amar Rava. Rava says, Ema. Therefore, you should say kel haydois. God. Who any thank you belongs to the, is a, is attributed to God. Amra um, Papa, Papa didn't want to uh, lose the earlier version of Roy Vahadois. Hilka, he said the best way to say it, Nemru Lertavai, you should say both. We go to Daf uh, Zion, say both. Kel Haidois, Veroy Haidois. You say God, basically, uh, maybe you should say it the reverse, but Roy Haidois doesn't mean most thank yous go to Hashem. A myriad, a, a, a multitude of thank yous. Rav can mean a multitude of thank yous to the God that every possible thank you goes to him. And that's uh, that's how he ended off this bracha. I don't know if they still make this bracha when they see rain, but the, that uh, at least you see the inside of what they used to do. Interesting, fascinating. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. a lot, a lot to do. Uh, a lot, yeah. yeah. Very good. I get the nacht, everybody. Good Shabbos. 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 Good Sh